Good morning, everybody. I think we're about to begin. And I'm going to say welcome. My name is Michael Wallace. I'm the, your executive director and a monthly donor uh, for Theatre Museum Canada, which we can still say now, but not at the end of the conference, press conference. Um, so repl replicating Indigenous protocol, we are going to start with a land acknowledgement, which as I've been told by an Indigenous uh, former board member, is essentially me introducing my DNA to the homeland that we're all on now. And that I will read the one that we have, but also for me to personalize it a little bit. So I'll let you know that on my mom's side, I am first generation. And on my dad's side, we've been here for a long, long time. Uh, and in terms of the next generation, uh, my first born kid was uh, born about 100 feet from here at St. Mike's. So that's me and this land. And this land, uh, it's Treaty 13. As we all know, I'm sure, and remember from our, no, none of us were told that. <laughs> anyway, but uh, for the museum, it's important to, for us to acknowledge that uh, people have been performing stories on these lands since time immemorial. And the museum is honored to be working on what were and are the ancestral lands of the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Anishinaabe Nation, including the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. In terms of other housekeeping, uh, for the live stream, we're going to post the video afterwards. Uh, so if there are technical issues, we're not going to wait for them. Uh, we'll keep on going, uh, and you can um, hear what we have to say afterwards. And also welcome. Uh, I've got emails today from people from St. John's to Victoria to Mexico. So it's a pretty big uh, spread. We're going to have a question period at the end. So if you're online, just put it in the chat. Uh, and if you're here, just put your hand up. Uh, there you go. So that's essentially, that's the housekeeping, and welcome. And now, now I'll introduce Brian Robertson, who's our uh, board chair. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Mike. Mike Wallace does about just about everything that the rest of us don't do, which is not much, and he does pretty well all of it, actually. Uh, Sheila McCarthy, congratulations on Women Talking. And those, of us, and those of us that watch the Academy Awards will never forget that beautiful red dress that you wore. I still have it. <laughs> so good morning and welcome. Uh, actually, welcome a thousand times because we've been on a 33-year journey uh, to get here so that we can announce the first permanent home of Canada's Theatre Museum at this marvelous Elgin Winter Garden Theatre Centre in downtown Toronto. It's taken us uh, all that time. The journey was started in 1990 by theatre critic Herbie Whitaker and it has, many, has had many chapters and champions, some of whom are here today including Kate Barris a long-time board member who will acknowledge many of these pioneers uh, shortly. In my much shorter tenure on the board, it's important that I recognize some people. Uh, first of all, the tireless work of Marlene Smith, our past president, and that of Nona MacDonald Heaslip, who has provided funding and bedrock support whenever it was necessary and we needed it, and lawyer John McKellar, who has donated hundreds of hours of his legal time and advice to help us along. And of course, everything our wonderful friend and longtime patron, Christopher Plummer, did for us. And finally, here we are, thanks to the support of our amazing board of directors, with all the th over 3,000 square feet of immediate museum space on the third floor here and a lot of additional expansion exhibition areas available to us. I don't think it is too important to note that in the initial mission statement that was drafted in 1990, theatre was defined in a very broad sense of being inclusive of many elements of the performing arts, including dance, opera, circus, and even vaudeville, which is appropriate given the fact that the Winter Garden Theatre sitting several floors above us, was presenting just that art form in the 1920s. And of course, we have to be very grateful 
to the Ontario Heritage Trust, headed by Beth Hanna, and to Gail Packwood and her wonderful staff here for their enthusiasm and support in making this happen. It was a somewhat extended process that they approached enthusiastically and brought valuable new ideas that have contributed to us being here today. In moving forward, we have retained the Toronto-based architectural firm of Reich and Petsch to undertake the planning and design work for the museum and also the Toronto design firm, Trajectory Brands, to rethink our public-facing graphic looks, many of which you are seeing today on the back here <clears throat> and also here, and will be reflected in a dramatically new website look. The museum, as I said, will be located on the third floor of the complex here, and we anticipate it will take five or six months for the transition into the remarkable exhibition space we envisage. The first exhibition is planned for late, sept late September. And today we are delighted to announce that one of Canada's most acclaimed actors has generously agreed to fill the mighty shoes left by Christopher Plummer, and that is Colm Fiore. Colm has generously and enthusiastically signed on to be one of our patrons. Now Colm is busy doing what all actors look forward to, and that is working. <laughs> He did give me a few words he would like me to hear, and this is called, quote, The Theatre Museum of Canada is a foundational resource for all of us. It showcases our rich cultural history and points towards a glorious future. I am delighted to be among those invited to participate as patrons of the museum, followed, following the example of the magnificent Christopher Plummer. For the first time in our 33 years history, we have a permanent home. We can't wait to welcome you and to share all that we are. Quote. Thank you very much, Colm. That's the end of Colm's note. And we're delighted to have you welcome. There'll be probably four patrons. Colm is the first and we'll announce the other three probably in the next few weeks or coming months. And just as importantly, we're underway with a $5 million capital campaign that will provide museums, startup and operating funding and create a solid foundation future by building on our existing endowment and sustaining funds. And of course, we will most enthusiastically be inviting all the wonderful angels who have and will be supporting Canada's marvelous performing arts heritage to join us. I'm now gonna ask my fellow board member, Kate Paris, Paris to come up and uh, honor some of our past pioneers. Okay. Well, it actually took 41 years to get here, but who's counting? Um, and although literally hundreds of people have helped to get us here, it all started with one man, Herbert, Herbert Whitaker. Now, some of you here may not even know that name, which is one of the reasons we need a theater museum. Uh, to some of you closer to my vintage, most of you actually here, um, he'll be remembered as the esteemed and well-loved drama critic for the Globe and Mail from 1949 to 1975. To some, he was affectionately known as Herbie. To me, he was Uncle Herb. Uh, he and my father had adjoining desks at the Globe and Mail uh, back when Herb first moved here from Montreal. Um, my dad and he quickly became great friends, so from the time I was a child, he was my favorite honorary uncle. In 1975, Herb was retired from the Globe because he was 65. But he was still, as many of you would know, he was still full of energy and ideas, especially the concept of creating a theatre museum. Now, I believe his hidden agenda was to find a home for his large personal collection of theatrical memorabilia, um, as if in preparation for their place in his museum, Herb wrote all of the pertinent information on the back of every single artifact and photograph, which is something I wish everybody would do, actually, because, you know, for your family's sake, you know, they don't have to look at that picture and go, who is that? But Herb did it all the time. In 1982, which is the 41 years ago I was mentioning, 
Herb attended a conference of Canadian theatre historians in Vancouver and proposed the creation of the theatre museum. In fact, his original concept was to have a chain of theatre museums dotted across the country. Imagine how long that would have taken. Uh, people who supported the idea and helped move it forward included Anne Saddlemeyer, Jean Roberts, Richard Plant, Anton Wagner, and many more. By 1991, which is the date that, that uh, Brian was referring to, the museum became a corporation. Thanks to the efforts of so many, some are still supporting us, like Curtis Barlow, who's still on our board, and Teddy Moore. Some are here today, Leonard McCarty, Astrid Jansen, Philip Silver, Robin Breon. It's great to see you all here. I hope I haven't missed anybody. Uh, and some are no longer with us, people like Jerry Aldred and Jim Buros and June Faulkner, Maxine Graham, Heather McCallum, Peter Smith, and of course, many more. During the 90s, I became Herb's regular theater-going companion, lucky me. And I often picked him up after theater museum meetings. Then I sat through dinner hearing his woes about how long it was taking. <laughs> Herb was crafty. He deftly planted the hook, started reeling me in. It was only a matter of time. By 2000, I was on the board. And in the ensuing years, I've been a board member, a secretary, a vice chair, a chair, vice chair again, chair again, and vice chair secretary. In that time, so many people have propelled us forward, but I'd like to acknowledge a few whose contributions stand out. Barbara Jessen has served on the board almost as long as I have and led us through some of our more turbulent times. She also brings a brilliant mind and an insistence on excellence. Bob White was our treasurer for some of those years, and he was instrumental in getting us our first major trillion grant. R.H. Thompson took our idea of creating the Legend Library and made it an invaluable record of Canada's most brilliant theater artists. Of course, there's Marlene Smith, who dedicated years to the museum, bringing her enthusiasm and personal connections in the theater community to lead us to this very space. But I'd especially like to acknowledge Mar Margaret McBurney, who led us fiercely forward at a time when we really needed a leader. And perhaps most importantly, she encouraged a bright young man to join the Theatre Museum Board. That man now deserves a huge portion of the credit for today's news, our Executive Director, Michael Willis. Sadly, <laughs> Sadly, although Herb lived to be nearly 96, it was not long enough for him to see his beloved museum become a reality. But he knew he was leaving it in good hands, and I feel confident that he would be delighted, as I am, to, be, to see where we are today. And where we are today is in this magnificent, historic, double-decker theater, which is to be our home. So it's my pleasure to introduce our new landlord, Managing Director of the Algon and Winter Garden Theater Center, Gail Pack. high up here when you're short. <laughs> Good morning everyone and thank you for joining us today. I am so pleased that Canada's Theatre Museum, which I'll have to get used to saying, Canada's Theatre Museum has found its new home at the Elgin and Winter Garden Theatre Centre. These theatres have been part of Canada's theatrical fabric for over a hundred years. We are the only stacked theatre complex ever to be built in Canada and today we are the last fully operational stacked theater in the world. That means that theaters sit one on top of each other, for those who may not know. The Elgin and Winter Garden history starts in the heyday of vaudeville, as Brian mentioned, when both theaters were bustling roadhouses for Marcus Lowe's touring entertainment empire. When famous vaudevillians came to town, they came here. And Torontonians got to see the likes of Sophie Tucker, Milton Burrow, George Burns, and Gracie Allen. Hometown favorites entertained audiences alongside these industry giants. In 1928, the Winter Garden closed and was abandoned for nearly 60 years, and the Elgin was transformed into a movie palace, mainly showing MGM musicals. The Elgin would become the place downtown to see uh, movies for decades, and still sometimes during TIFF. In 
1981, the Ontario Heritage Trust saw the uniqueness and potential of these two theatres. And the Trust rescued them from demolition and went on to renovate and restore both to their original style and grandeur. And aren't we lucky that they did that. In 1982, the theatres received National Historic Site status. So we won't be coming a condo, Michael. You can <laughs> The 80s and 90s were a time of the mega musical, and the Elgin was home to Cats, the Who's Tommy, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, among others. Today, we've returned to our roots and operate primarily as a roadhouse, presenting a variety of performers and productions for the past 20 plus years. Everyone from Mikhail Baryshnikov and Christopher Plummer to Stomp, the Drazzy Chaperone, Caroline or Change, and Opera Atelier have graced our stages. We host jukebox musicals, pantomimes, drag shows, comics, authors festivals, jazz concerts, and thought-provoking lectures. You could say we've come full circle. Back to our beginnings where Marcus Lowe literally wrote on the walls what the audience would see on his stages. If you look up, um, around us right now. It's written on the plaques, vaudeville, drama, tableau, burlesque. We may not use all these same words today, but the intention remains. We are a place to gather in person to be entertained, enriched, and uplifted with live performances and presentations. So what better place for Canada's Theatre Museum to be than here at the Elgin and Winter Garden? Here they will have a space to promote their mission and invite us all to explore and be inspired by the past, present, and future of Canadian theatre. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Gail. My great pleasure to ask Sheila McCarthy to come up and to say a few words. Sheila. Uh, many years ago, I uh, was invited to play Peter Pan at the Elgin uh, with Ross Petty. And I remember on opening night, I was in my Mary Martin bubble, and I said, Ross, you just do all the jokes. I just want to play Peter Pan. I just want to fly um, in the harness. Everything was asleep for about three months in the harness. Um, anyway, I flew out on opening night, and this little kid in the front row said, in a really loud voice, he said, oh, it's just an old lady in green tights. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there, <laughs> that's great. Um, so yes, uh, there you go. Um, I've had a long, incredible career here. And uh, now they tell me I'm a big hairy movie star. But you know, I started as a little chorus girl. And what I wanted to just mention very briefly was where I started. Um, I'm in a little dance school in Willowdale at the Nortown Plaza above the Laura Secord. And it's the Alan and Blanche Lund School of Dance. And uh, Lloyd Malafont is putting us through our paces who went on to be an usher after years and young. Some of you must know Lloyd Malafont. He was my dance teacher, but we, everybody was very nervous. We heard that Mr. Lund was going to be coming to the studio that day, and that was an incredibly special thing for all of us little girls. Um, and Mr. Lund arrived, and he, he waltzed into the dance studio, and he took Blanche in his arms, and they did a pas de deux together, and we watched and we were dazzled, and he danced with us. And for me, Mr. Lund, Alan Lund, and Blanche, they were my heroes. They were the reason that I wanted to do what I have been lucky enough to, to carry on and do. And that's why when Brian invited me here today, I just I have to talk about the giants in our business those people who must be remembered and must be honored and must be cherished, their papers, their photos, everything about them, so that the students and the kids who are born now and are going through Sheridan and Humber and all the college, you know, God love them to pursue a career in this business so that they have the chance to come here and 
see that our history is so rich and so deep and so um, beautiful. And uh, those kids who are now, you know, sort of in the dance schools in Toronto and everywhere have big shoes to fill because, you know, there are giants in the sky. <laughs> and this place is going to give them the opportunity when they come to the theater here, when they come with classes, to say, wow, we have Fred and Ginger right here in Canada. Um, I also just wanted to mention that I, it's so easy for me to come here and say a few words and, you know, do my triple time step. But the heroes here are the people who have toiled for years and years, 41 years, to get this off the ground. And uh, I applaud them and honor them because they are the giants. And I thank you so much and I look forward to uh, contributing whatever I can uh, to this endeavor. And um, that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks very much. So just before we go to the uh, questions at the end, if there are any, uh, I just want to have a quick note from the, the Minister of Canadian Heritage who could not make it today. But he says, and I think he's right, not just because he's a funder, uh, museums are pillars in our communities. They tell our stories and allow people of all ages to discover and enjoy our rich heritage. This investment that we are making in Canada's Theatre Museum uh, is supporting the design and planning of the museum at the Elgin and Winter Garden Theatre Centre, their new home, which will allow even more people to come together and enjoy our culture and history. And what he's referring to there is a cultural spaces grant that is, uh, we've been using for the planning uh, and the architectural work. And that's a matching gift program, so they would give us half. And I would also just take, to take a moment now to thank very much Sheila Croft, uh, who is here, and Nona mcdonald Heaslip, who are not here, uh, because they did the matching, and that made some magic happen. Uh, I'd also like to thank Pauline Dolovich is here uh, from Reich and Petsch, and that's been a joy to work with them. We, um, we were rehearsing another project just to you know, see if we could work together, and that we could work together, so then we thought, well, let's find a space that's worth working in, and that's why we're here. Uh, and later on today, you'll see uh, some renderings of some of the ideas uh, for what it would be like to come to Canada's Theatre Museum. I also just want to take a moment to recognize uh, Ron Braden, uh, the family of Herbert Whitaker uh, and the estate of Paul Lapointe, who is one of the first employees of the Canada Council. Um, and each of those made gifts to the Theatre Museum in their will, uh, which is an amazing thing that millions of Canadians do. Um, and I would encourage you to think about that, not necessarily for the Theatre Museum, but for something that's important for you, because it's stunning, certainly. And, and the, the change that Ron's gift made um, is just nice, very stabilizing. So we've got... Uh, a sustaining fund, and then we draw from that each year, depending, um, and so that's brilliant, stable funding, um, which is very helpful for us to have, so that we can do things for you. Um, and I also like to acknowledge the funding uh, from all the individuals and foundations and families, uh, specifically the William and Nona Heaslip Foundation uh, and the Ontario Arts Council, which is also an agency of the Government of Ontario. So we've got our new name, we've got our new look, um, and we have a new landlord. Thank you very much. Are there any questions, if you want? Because this is sort of a press conference, and also I'll check in with Josh to see. I've got a, a text from my 13-year-old. I have to figure out why they're looking at YouTube instead of being in class. But, uh, so we know <laughs> that the live stream is working, which is great. Um, and so we'll check. I don't know if anyone has any questions online or... Uh, if you have any questions, and we can also just mingle and have coffee and uh, if anyone has any questions at that point in time, that would be great. And we will certainly stay in touch. And thanks very much, because there's folks in this room uh, that have been with this project for a very long time. And there's folks in this room that make theatre, and, uh, and that's important for us as well. And we've been doing that for um, either a short time or a long time. And it's pretty awesome, like the, the YouTube and the online work we're, we're doing, Already, the, the museum's resources are being accessed across the country uh, by teachers and students um, in a pretty important way. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so are there any other are there questions that? Seeing none. There we go. Uh, no motion to adjourn. But thank you very much, everyone, for coming out. We have coffee. We've got uh, pickies, and thanks very much. And you'll be back in this building uh, when we have 
more news, more events. We probably, if it's not at 11 o'clock, we probably have, you know, be a bit of a party. But uh, thank you very much for coming today for this, what I think is a pretty important announcement. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Y